Hey guys, it's me again, Val Toxic Free. Welcome! I've just uh, got a notification to say that Megan's had a baby boy. So there you go. <laughs> oh, see, Royal News gets announced on this channel. Yep, yeah, just had a notification. Two seconds before I press play, we've had a baby boy. Lovely. Not the like Megan very much, but hey, well done, Harry. Anyway, so I've just done a video about trolls. I'm going to do a video about. Um, Toxic life coaches. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to, here she goes again, here she goes again. But I'm not going to ignore the elephant in the room. If I did ignore the elephant in the room, that would make me an enabler. I don't do enabling. So when I know things are going on, on YouTube, you know, I'm not a life coach. Let's just get that out there quickly. I'm not a life coach. I'm just somebody who just makes videos. And I make videos about whatever happens in my life. Um, and at the moment I'm seeing a lot of toxicity going on. I've just done a video about trolls. Again, you know, like I said in the last video, empaths will not troll empaths because we tend to know what an empathic person looks like. It's only the narcissist that troll empaths. Um, and if I do <coughs> decide that I want to call anybody a narcissist or toxic, I always have proof. So most of my videos have got loads of proof in them. So, you know, if you're going to call someone a narcissist, you know, back yourself up. That's what I'm going to say. So I made a video, or I'm going to make a video now, um, about uh, like tips on how to stay safe online. Because as we know, this community attracts narcissists. It's like a candy store, isn't it? You know, with a candy, basically. Um, there, let me just start by saying there is a lot of really, really good life coaches. Oh, I'm bouncing. Sorry. A lot of good life coaches out there. Really is. Um, I think you can kind of tell the difference. Hopefully after this video, you'll kind of hopefully at least know what you're looking at. Just be aware. You know, the thing is, when you come into this community, it's like going on holiday. You know, when you go on holiday, you tend to leave your brains at home, don't you? You go on holiday, you're walking down the street, you know, you've got your iPhone handy, you've got your map. Well, you don't need a map now out days, have you? Because you've got your Google map. But I mean, you've got your, your map on your phone, you're walking with your bag open, hanging over your shoulder, you're staring up at the lovely architecture and the buildings and you... You know, you're not aware because you think you're safe, you're on holiday, your brain's been left at home. It's the same thing when people come into this community, I think. You know, they come into this community of, of life coaches, life coaches, life coaches, life coaches, just see signs and people helping and all of a sudden they've got to drop their guard. And they don't actually realise that narcissists are attracted. In fact, because of, I did a video a while ago, because of the way the world's going, narcissists are being... Um, we're turning into little warriors and we tend to know what narcissists are now. We're, we're making narc awareness. But because they're not getting any, any supply out there, they're coming into here to get the supply now and they're camouflaging themselves and um, trying to come across as uh, life coaches. So I kind of want to make people more aware that, you know, this community is safe if you get the right people and get the right support, but it can be uh, a really difficult place. So. Again, if those people don't like what I'm doing, thumb me down and move on. And those that do want to watch my videos and do appreciate the fact that I am actually here to try and help survivors of abuse and um, anyone who does sort of call me names and stuff. Again, what does that say about them? And something keeps pinging, so I'm going to have to ignore it. So there is people in this community that will start channels, call themselves life coaches and it's all to gain, it's all for their own supply. Um, a lot of people start out as victims. See, if you, it's hard because I know there's lots of life coaches that are probably looking at me and thinking, Val, stop tiring us. I'm not tiring you. If you're a really good life coach and you know who you are, then you can ignore what I'm saying. It's not about you. And those that, who, that know who it's about and feel, you know, if the cap fits, wear it. Because if you feel that I'm talking about you, well then, hmm, there may be something in that. Uh, the world is full of crazies, of freaks, of narcissists, bloody psychopaths, paedophiles, murderers, serial killers, any single person that's got a disorder, they can come onto YouTube. Please get our awareness brains in. Anybody in this world can have YouTube. If YouTube was around 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago, Ted Bundy would have been doing his trade, you know, on YouTube. I'm really gonna to have to turn off the messages now, aren't I? Um, you know, Ted Bundy, 
all those Charlie Manson, Jeffrey Dahmer, they would have had YouTube. They would have been on YouTube. They would have probably been faking it as life coaches, as, as fake false Samaritans. You know, we've got to remember that times don't change. Just social media that's changed. And it's just made it open for people to get on this platform and create a fake world. We have to not listen to the words. We listen to words. You know, we could have some man stood in front of us with an axe and he's saying to us, it's okay, trust me, come here. It's okay, I won't hurt you, come here. What do we do? We go over because of their words, yet there they are still with a bloody axe covered in blood, having just murdered somebody. They're going, it's okay, I won't hurt you, come here. We go, because for some reason, for some reason we tend to listen to the words more than what we see in front of us. So that's kind of my weird explanation there. Also, I want to point out there's a lot of really good life coaches, but there's also life coaches that just have um, information. And, and they're the ones that... Mm, a lot of life coaches just have information. You want to find a life coach who's, who's had experience, or even just somebody in a channel, a YouTuber, somebody who's talking about experience, not just information because we can all get information off google and there's a little tip there a little clue that um you really want to feel that they're giving you more insight it's coming from experience rather than google i think that's one thing as well that i've noticed I talk about narcissistic life coaches not just bad life coaches the, the video i did before um this one i'll put up here was about the difference between bad life coaches and narcissistic life coaches there are bad life coaches and narcissistic life coaches like there are bad plumbers bad bad painters bad teachers bad hairdressers you know there's a lot of bad people but there's a difference between bad and narcissists basically you know, I won't do a video about anything unless I've experienced. And this is why I'm doing this video, because I've experienced it. I'm not going to talk about this if it doesn't exist. I'm not going to sort of like start putting word out there and be, make you wary about something that doesn't exist. Because that's just, that's going to freak you all out. I, I'm trying to kind of like share experiences that I've had. And I've had experience of this. Not only through my experience, I've experienced the word from other people who've come to me because they trust my, my videos that they've watched. They'll, they email me and they've let me know what's happened to them to do with life coaches on YouTube. So although I can't use their experience as evidence or as proof or anything like that, because that's their evidence, that's their story, not mine to tell. But I do have, and I've seen and I've heard a lot of things and I've seen it, it through experience. So whether you trust me or whether you don't trust me, that's up to you. Um, hopefully, you know, again, you look at me, watch my videos, watch me rather than just listen to me. Bad coaches get bad reviews. Narcissist coaches get good reviews. That's because obviously they pretend to be the most perfect person. And what they'll only do is they'll discard the people who aren't going to be beneficial to them or give them supply or the way they argues with them or disagrees with something. They will ghost. But a lot of the time in this narcissist world, people don't make complaints because they start off traumatised. When they go to the coach, they start off depressed and wanting some information. And also they get told, go no contact, go no contact. So if they've got a bad life coach and they find that, you know, they don't get on, they don't like them, they will probably just go and make a review about them and say something, you know, tell people that they're not good. But when it comes to narcissist life coaches, they generally, people will just not do anything and not say anything because they don't want to get themselves deeper into that rabbit hole. And that's the difference. Most of the comments that you see on um, reviews from narcissist life coaches will be good reviews and the odd bad one will be ignored because of the bias. Because everybody thinks, well, there's something wrong with that person there. Maybe that person's a narcissist. That's the difference. Bad hairdressers, bad plumbers, you know, they get one star. You look at their review pages and they're basically full of complaints, full of comments. And you don't go there. And that's the difference. You look at a life coach, loads of brilliant comments. Could be a narcissist because they've got to be good. They've got to do their job correctly. Otherwise, they aren't. That's what a narcissist is. It's someone who pretends to be perfect. So, I 
think I think a lot of, a lot of narcissists basically um, come onto this channel thinking they were abused. I think they actually think with their reaction abuse, which I'm going to do another video on reactional abuse. Um, I do think that they think they are victims, and they start out on channels as the victims and then they see an opportunity as well and think hmm, I can make something from here I can get supply so they go from victim to life coach in one easy step so I think that's something we need to look out for um, so again I wanted to make a video where people could start looking out for themselves you know be more aware of who they're watching if you don't mind watching a channel if you don't mind watching information coming from a narcissist you know like HG or Vaclin that's fine that's fine then ignore this video but if you're somebody out there that thinks oh my god I didn't realize this I don't want to get information or donate or or give monetization to a narcissist someone who's actually made me come to this channel because they've nearly killed me and they've taken everything from me you know if you want the choice this is what I'm doing I'm just trying to give you choice that if you don't care you don't care that's not my business but I want to put the information out there I'm just a platform I'm just a mouth if you don't like what I'm saying, then that's absolutely fine. But the people that do care, they need to at least have the information so they can choose. Because deceit by omission is one of the worst things. If you're going to pretend to be an ARC survivor and you're going to start going on and on about all these different things about how to help people and you want money, I just think that people need to know and people need to be aware that these, these things, ex these people exist on YouTube. Life coaching is an unregulated field. So anyone with or without training, can go out at any time and open up a life coaching business. Counseling and other related professions are regulated. People go through certain steps like education and testing and hours postgraduate under supervision to make sure that they reach a level of competency. I get more worried when I see individuals who have no training in coaching or counseling or anything just come out and say that they're a coach or they go to one of these weekend seminars. Sometimes life coaches attempt to do the work of counselors. People bring up concerns about depression, anxiety, OCD, substance use problems, uh, personality disorders, and the life coaches don't have the training to know, to refer necessarily, and they certainly don't have the training to deliver treatment but sometimes they will attempt to anyway. Now, in most areas, this is illegal. This is wandering into an area that has practice protection. Again, to be a life coach, it could be a weekend seminar. I've seen trainings as short as three hours. To be a mental health counselor, it's usually about three years. But if we look at a lot of life coaches out there, unfortunately, there are a number of unscrupulous individuals we see out there. And you can see these people, of course, in real life. You can see them on their websites, on the internet. So if somebody is not effective at being a life coach and they go through a three-hour training, it's hard to see how at the end of that they would be effective. And honestly, it's hard to see how they'd be effective even if it was two weeks of training or a month of training. That doesn't leave enough time to mature. I mean, I've done some research and these are some facts. Now, firstly, you know, a proper... Not, proper a uh, life coach should know more about narcissism, obviously. If you want to find a coach, find one that's probably good at narcissism. But, I mean, I was watching Katie Morton and she was saying that they should have to three to f 300 to 500 hours of training. And I don't think these narcissist life coaches who just decide to get a certificate do this. I think it's a couple of hours of that on the internet. I don't know. I'm not going to say because I haven't really looked into that. But you really should not... <laughs> Mm -hmm. See, they should have ethics and integrity, first of all. I'm going to read out what I've written here. Integrity being honest and showing a strong moral and ethical principle and values. Integrity is regarded as the honest and truthfulness, truthfulness or accuracy, 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 accuracy of actions. Narcissists struggle with this. Be alert. They should always conduct themselves to the highest level of ethics, integrity, accountability and responsibility. Now, we don't know that. That's something that we, hopefully, they do. We don't actually know whether they're doing that or not. But if an asks, I very much doubt it. And that's a red flag. But you won't find that out until later on. Um, check if they have a, a coaching agreement. That's something else I've got here. Prior to the, in, prior, prior to the initial sessions, ask questions. Any good life coach, 
if you ask any questions, if you ask them, you know, what was your relationship? How did you get into this? You know, did you, are you an ARC survivor? If they're quite open and quite unwilling to give you the information, but if they block you down and shut you down and don't really want to say anything, then that's not an empath. An empath wouldn't really want to do that. The empath would give you as much information to help. So just ask about their agreements. Ask about things before you start anything with them. They will have fake empathy, which is very easy for people to, you know, this is what got us here in the first place. They're fake empathy. You know, they set off authentic and real. But after that, after a while, their authenticity will start to, to dwane and they'll start to show themselves because their authenticity can only last for a certain amount of time. They'll soon change. Keeping up the empathy will be hard. Look out for that mask drip dropping. I've written dripping here. <laughs> That's not going to look very good with their mask dripping. Anyway, um, you know, if you disagree with them or you don't fit into their box or you don't believe their narrative or you don't follow their script and they get angry with you, that's not good. You really need to work that one out. Counselors can be coaches. Coaches can't be counselors. Now, counselors can be coaches, which is yes. If you're a counselor, you can be a coach, but a life coach cannot be a counselor. So they should not be doing counseling work. They should not. Um, they should refer you if you're too in in deep with anything. With with. <sighs> See, this means so much to me. I'm getting, I'm getting sort of like um, confused talking about it. It's here. They should give you tools. They should not give you opinions. See, their opinions could come from a bad place. Their opinions come from their experience. It's their projections. It's their past. So opinions coming from a narcissist to help an empath doesn't sound like a very good idea, does it? So, so just be very careful. They should give you the tools. They should ask you questions of what you think you should do and they should help you make your own mind up not tell you what to do not tell you what to do um, if you're suffering from real deep health issues ptsd phobias major depression ocd mental health issues gambling addictions drugs anything you should be referred on to a counselor life coaches should not do that life coaches are not qualified to deal with such intricate mental state and mental health because they aren't trained anyone can call themselves a life coach but if they get somebody in front of them who's really mentally and severely ill they could cause more damage and i've seen this happen this is why i'm doing this video and they should rec recommend different coaches if they can't deal with them for any reason if they don't get on if there's no rapport they should then refer you on and not just abandon you and they shouldn't coach anyone under 18 as well that's one thing i found out here um, without express written consent of the parent or guardian. Again, I've put here reviews do lie. So really believing reviews is an iffy thing to do because again, reviews are just words. Ask about their cancellation policy first. This is in case you want to stop the sessions for whatever reason. Ask about their refund policy. Yeah, PayPal. You can get a refund of PayPal. If you have any issues, if you haven't got the service, if you haven't had what you've paid for, you can get your money back of PayPal or a percentage of it. So look into that. You can. I've seen it done. Um, life coaches should st clearly state to clients and potential clients the terms of any agreement or contracts. Um, you should be very suspicious of anyone who's coaching and mentoring that does not clearly describe its refund policy and honour it without reservation. You really need to get clear about their, you know, their refund policy, their cancellation policy. Ask these questions before you start. Find out if you get um, one first free session, because sometimes people do that. If you have any problem with these people, you should be able to talk to them. Again, insight. These people should have more insight than just education. Um, they will give you information only you will hear and learn yeah they'll give you information only that you will hear and learn from but not really relate no emotion no empathy no experience told make sure they have had experience with narcissists you know again they should give you tools to help yourself telling you what to do um, isn't something they should be doing they should be giving you ideas tips and tools to work it out for yourselves inappropriate flirting that's something else. If they, if they do that with you, that's a definite no-no. They should not be allowed, they should not allow the relationship to cross the inappropriate territories. Avoid inappropriate sexual or romantic relationships with clients. 
that's what they should be doing so if you feel like you're being flirted with or any kind of like innuendos or kind of things that are crossing your boundaries you really need to either say something or move on to another coach um, this is about more online um, this is something that is, is, a, is slightly slightly fact slightly opinion as well so again these are facts and my opinions mixed in comment cleansing I don't comment cleanse but comment cleansing to the point where if somebody asks a question or disagrees with something in the video that they've made and you just get blocked now one thing I want to also say <clears throat> when you're blocked by somebody online you will not know you will not know you will see your message sitting there forever and you will wonder why no one's commenting or thumbing it up if you've been blocked you will not see it what you need to do is to have a second account always have a second account so if you ask a question that you think may not be um, well accepted by the online person by the channel by the coach go and check it out from another account or even just log out and go and check it if you cannot see the comment you have put up once you've logged out um, or once you've gone to a different account means you're blocked because you'll never know you're blocked and that's the trouble they block you left right and center but you will always see your message there and your comments there and you'll never notice you'll never see it's gone um, and if you're blocked that's a no-no because I don't think that they should be blocking you if you say something they don't like a normal empath or normal life coach with you know um, morals and ethics will try and ask you why you're maybe disagreeing or try and put you know straight or agree to disagree or just say thank you for your opinion but you know getting blocked is a little bit of a to me it's a negative thing it's comment cleansing it's making that person in that video look perfect in the comments it's making it look like no one ever disagrees with him or that he's so perfect that dare he say anything wrong you know he's obviously not going to that's basically as well not being able to take criticism if they're deleting comments that are negative to them they, they should be replying to them as well not just replying to the ones that are good I've seen comments once where they were all, per, all all kind of like help me help me help me comments like I need help I need advice and they were all ignored and then one or two people said oh I think you're fantastic they're the only ones they replied to and said thank you they ignored everybody else asking for you know answers and asking questions but only replied to the ones that were giving them praise there's a they look through the comments are these people getting commented on are they getting replies on their comments it doesn't take long just to write something very short and sweet if anything you know there's no point to me it's my opinion again is if you're gonna start a channel up it's your job and if somebody in the comments says something I've had people, I've seen people in comments saying, I want to die, please help me. And that comment has been ignored. Now, I've been blocked from that channel that I was looking at the comments on once. I couldn't reply to that person. I would have reached out and said, if you want help, I'll help you. And that offends me, is if you can't just check through or get someone else, get a moderator to check through the comments just to make sure that nobody needs really help. I find that really odd how they can't have the time again that's my opinion and anybody who's a really good life coach who doesn't have the time to do that well I apologize for what I've just said if you terminate sessions they should respect that for any reason if you want to terminate it um, th there should be no reason why you can't terminate any sessions and they shouldn't get angry with you they should just say okay fine thank you very much or they should want to know why you're terminating asking you questions they don't another thing that a lot of life coaches will do as well will try and isolate you I've heard this I've heard this from experience from people is they will try and isolate you and say don't do this don't mingle with them don't go with him don't go with them ignore that person don't speak to that person don't speak to your mother ignore your dad and I think that's really bad they should be trying to mend the relationships between people that you don't speak to anymore just checking now I was just uh, couldn't see it for a notification they should try to be try trying to improve you, trying to uh, mend your relationship. See, a lot of life life coaches aren't there to deal with your mental health. You should have had that dealt with previously. Life coaches are there to improve the rest of your life, to move you forward from where you are, not go back and not digress into your past so much. You should have had that dealt with by a counsellor already. Life coaches should just help you see the future and move on and upwards. But some of them will actually have the label life coach because you don't need to you don't need any um
qualification. You don't. There's no regulations in life coaching. So they will call themselves a life coach, but do counselling. And if someone is suicidal, how are they supposed to deal with that person? How do we know that there's not people killing themselves because of these people who say they're life coaches that can't control somebody's mental health because they're not trained for years to do it? It's really bad. They should, they'll always, they also ghost apparently. I've, he, I've heard a lot of stories that, you know, if you aren't feeding their supply, if you aren't, whatever, for some reason, whatever happens, I've heard of people who've been ghosted, completely ignored. You don't do that. That is what the trauma has, that's why the person's come to you, because of their devalue, their discard, their trauma. So what, you go to a life coach, you get ghosted. Can you imagine the hurt and the pain that makes that person feel that not only does their family or their husband or their partner hate them, but their life coach hates them too? They must be a bad person because that's how they feel. That's how victims feel. We feel worthless. So if you're ghosted and ignored by a life coach, when they're supposed to be the ones helping you, so that's something else. You need to look out for these things. You should not be getting ghosted by life coaches. I mean, I've got a few opinions here as well. My opinion is that I, I don't like people asking for money. I don't like them asking for money. I don't like them doing um, merch, making money off them. You know, I, again, if you're a really good life coach, if you've worked hard and you're an empath, go for it. You deserve everything you get because you've put your heart and soul into it. And you're, you, you know, you put so much, we give, Empathic people give so much to people, yeah. But if you're just opening up a channel to screw people and ask for money and, and Google information, I think that's just too, that's just not right. I'm not impressed with that whatsoever. You know, they start asking for money so they can get video equipment and new mics and new backgrounds and new... T no, you, you, the best people, Quinn, look at him. He just does it from an iPhone or off a phone. You don't need to get loads of equipment. You don't need to beg for money to get equipment. That is wrong. So please, anybody that's begging for money for equipment, it's not right. I don't agree with that whatsoever. A few other things as well. People that don't show their faces. Why? If you're a life coach, why aren't you showing your face? What are you ashamed of? You're putting yourself out there, out there, you're asking for money, you're getting donations, you're being charged, you're charging, you're, you know, why, why aren't you showing your face? Why are you just a voice? I don't agree with that. And I want also, I want you to look at their profile pictures, their channel faces, their profile pictures on their channels. Now, okay, I'm going to say something quite controversial here. And if this person's watching this, he'll probably know who I'm talking about. If you see a life coach standing on a beach, topless, a male, obviously, a true life coach is not going to advertise themselves standing on a beach with no shirt on, okay? That's a no-no. Look, start being aware and opening your eyes. Another tip, watch them with the sound down. I'm going to do a video on some Paku eyes. Now, some Paku eyes are those eyes where there's just whites all around it. Charlie Manson had them. They're... they're it could be an old wives tale and might be something in it I don't know but I do feel that people with some Paku eyes they are just there could be some truth in it you turn the volume down and you watch their duping delight you watch their facial expressions and don't listen to what they say like I said at the beginning don't listen to their words you'll see a face and you will see their facial expressions and you'll see so much more because you're not being sidestepped by the words you're not being just you're not taken in by what they're actually saying you're actually looking at the person actions speak louder than words there's so many more things i can say on this and if i think of some more i'm going to do another video but there's so many channels out there that have just opened up they're rampant they're on youtube now and they're fighting with all the good channels i think this is it and all the good channels are getting smeared by them and all you survivors out there you're just going to be learning from narcissists um I'm going to leave it there, but please stay safe. Please be careful on YouTube. Start being more aware. Look at what they're saying. Look at their facial expressions. Look at, read the comments, you know. 
do they reply to comments or do they just give it a heart um, there's, there's so many things guys take care see you later